In my own life, God has always led me through unsolicited open doors. And in the year 2000, I received an invitation from a, a gentleman who was the director of one of the oldest outreach missions in Manhattan, started in 1895. He said, Bill, I would love for you to come up to the city and visit the mission. So I took a trip to New York with our youth pastor. I was pastoring a church in Western North Carolina at the time. And when we arrived in New York, I was overwhelmed by what I saw. I experienced the diversity that was here. The whole world was here. I, I learned later that 50 million people visit the city every year, 40 million from the continental United States, but then 10 million from around the world. And we got on the trains and I heard all these foreign languages and I thought I was in a foreign country. And God began to touch my heart about the city. Now, I'll, I'll never forget going up on top of the Empire State Building and uh, my youth pastor and I were up there and it grew dark and we saw the lights just expanding in all directions. And we thought, you know, each one of these lights could represent an individual in this city. The fourth largest in the world, the largest in the United States, over eight million people living here. So that was my first exposure to New York. And when I went back home, we planned a mission trip. And when we came back the following summer on a mission trip, began to preach the gospel in the open air, we met the different individuals. When we got back home, one of the youth sponsors that was with us met my wife when she came to pick me up and she said, you're moving to New York City. I didn't know we were moving, but they saw the impact of the, of the city on my own life. And we began to pray about the needs in New York and then I had a health crisis. And I didn't know how many more years of effective ministry I was going to have. And so my wife and I, after praying about this, really believed that God wanted us to invest our life in preaching the gospel to as many lost people as we could. There were challenges. Our family was being stretched. Our children that had never grown up in an inner city. And so I think that did have an impact on my children. But one of the greatest things is they learned the diversity of the city. They learned how to get along with other people. They, they began to learn to enjoy what God has created in the ethnic differences. And I think because of that, it has made my children um, more understanding. Uh, I think it's also made them leaders. I look at uh, my young boys now that are grown and, and they're leaders. And I think the city helped produce that. I believe that every Christian church needs to have an impact on the surrounding community. Our Christian churches are for the edification of believers, and yet there's a great emphasis in the Word of God in about touching your community. Our love for God should issue into a love for our neighbor. And so when we first came to New York City, there was an emphasis on evangelism as we began to plant a church. There was a lot of open-air preaching. There was tract distributions. And so as we saw the local church uh, coming together, there was an emphasis on building up those believers, but then a desire to see those believers impact their community, not only with the gospel, but with the love of God. And one day I had a couple in our church come up to me and tell me, Pastor, we would like to start a food pantry. And initially, I, I, I'd never done anything like that before. They said, you know, Pastor, we have a tsunami in our neighborhood. And this was after the tsunami that hit Indonesia. They said, there are a lot of people in our city that don't have enough food to eat. God led us to start a food pantry, and I'll never forget when we started it. We started it in the end of January, six years ago, in the dead of winter. And we had one service on a Tuesday. It was scheduled for noon. And at nine o'clock that morning, our first service, when we had never even advertised it, we went out into the park and here was a line developing three hours before we opened up the doors. And I saw older people standing there with walkers, others seated in wheelchairs on the benches. And God broke my heart. And I said, if, if the elderly in this city have a pressing need for food and are willing to stand out in the cold to get it, then God, you want us to do something about loving our neighbor. And so we began the Bread of Life evangelistic services as an outgrowth of our vision to get the gospel to lost people. And the community started to come in. And in time, we had to have nine services to accommodate all the people that were coming. 
And they were always evangelistic services coupled with the Bread of Life ministry. And we, we discovered that God was using the beneficial deeds to bring glory to His name and open up a door and create goodwill among God's people. It, it's amazing to me how you start discovering things in the Bible that you had never seen before. Theology that comes from the heart of God. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 19, God says, I show my love by giving food and clothes. And then the Lord said, don't be anxious about what you will eat or wear. And then James says that your religion is worthless if you can tell someone to be warmed and filled. And then you read the prophet Isaiah in the 58th chapter, and, and God says, this is the type of fast that I want from God's people. The type of fast I want is to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. And I began to see the theology of the love of God in scripture. And then I started to read letters like Titus, and I discovered that, that Paul put a great emphasis in training the church leadership to train the people of God to love their neighbor by meeting people's pressing needs. And, and the Bible says the church needs to learn to do this. And so as we began to learn to love our neighbor, we saw God begin to open up the neighborhood to his gospel. And then we saw God move us from the East Village to the other side of town, the Chelsea area, take us from a building where we had to have nine services to a building that was three times the size and now we only have five services during the week that are evangelistic loving our neighbor beneficial deed services people are coming in and they're hearing the gospel of god they'll sit down for an hour service and they'll hear gospel songs sung and the the word of god will uh, be open and the gospel will be preached and while they're in that service, they have a grocery cart in the back that is being filled with groceries that have been donated to us. And they'll leave our service with over $100 worth of food. They're experiencing the love of God and they're hearing the gospel of God. Our desire is to have an international preaching station where we can have multiple language hearing the gospel of God and uh, so that's our vision moving into the future. We actually uh, have separated the people by language. And every Tuesday we have a service that's in Spanish, which is followed by another service in English. And then on Thursday we have a service in Mandarin, Chinese, and followed by English. And then on Saturday we have another service in English, but we're looking to expand our Chinese services to include the Cantonese language. And to help us do this, we are partnering with uh, pastors across the country who uh, speak different languages. Uh, for instance, our, uh, our Mandarin Chinese service is being preached by a Chinese pastor in Texas, and, and they're recording for us uh, expositions from each chapter in the Gospel of John. So one sermon from chapter one, another one from chapter two. And these are now uh, in our possession and we are taking these, these video sermons and projecting them on a huge screen in the front of our church. And then we have a Spanish pastor uh, who's a missionary to Mexico. And so our, our desire is then to find a, uh, a pastor who speaks Cantonese and he'll record the Gospel of John evangelistic services and then Russian and Ukrainian and however many languages that God gives us an opportunity to do this with. When I stop and consider how many people are working together to affect this gospel outreach here in the city, it, it, it's a delight. God is bringing together churches from different denominations. We have Baptist churches, Bible churches, Presbyterian churches that are coming as mission teams to the city to labor with us. And we've got the New York Gospel Ministries forming strategic partnerships with the New York Mission to the Jews with the owner of this building. And these entities are coming together with these local churches and Christian colleges. We have mission teams that come from various Christian colleges. And then we also have interns. Part of our vision with New York Gospel Ministries is to see Christian colleges have an internship where even ministerial students can come, maybe even graduate students can come and they can do online education. They can stay with us here in the city and we can get them plugged into the ministry. 
and ministerial students that need experience in preaching, we can plug them into these evangelistic services and they can learn to preach the gospel of God and love their neighbor. And so there's strategic partnerships, not only with, with organizations, but with churches, mission teams, colleges, internships. And then we also have a lot of individuals. We have individual supporting, supporters, as well as churches. And so there's, it's a beautiful thing to see the, the body of Christ coming together to affect a ministry in a city like New York. You, you could have a church planted on every corner of Manhattan and still not be able to reach all the people. So it's a beautiful thing to see the broad body of Christ working together for the kingdom here in the city. When we started the Bread of Life Outreach, we just had a handful of people that first day. Probably around 20 people came to that first evangelistic service. And now, six years later, we have the five services on this side of town, and over 730 different families are coming every week to hear the gospel of God. And that's more people not only being benefited by the love of God, meeting their pressing needs, but more people hearing the gospel of God. And then in addition to what takes place inside the building, uh, we do a distribution of, of food to other entities in the city. And we also have a distribution on the Lower East Side on the other side of town where we were. And so the gospel is going out in these locations. And then beyond the Beneficial Deeds Ministry, we oftentimes go into the open air. You can get a sound permit here in New York City from the police department and go out on the street corner with amplified sound and preach the gospel of God. You can get into the center of Times Square for $45. You can get a sound permit from the police department, stand on the street corner, 45th and Broadway in the center of Times Square, and you'll be in the center of New York, which people consider to be the center of the world, and you can preach the gospel of God. And we love to do that, but we are also enjoying the fact that with the evangelistic services in the church, with our international preaching station vision in the multiple languages, we're having an opportunity to preach to the same people over and over and over again. And, and we love to do that as well. We're asking God to give us many more kingdom partners. We need churches and individuals that have a burden to take the gospel to the lost, a walk around the block in this city, a walk around the world. We can do uh, international missions right here in our own backyard. So we're in need of people that will pray for the ministry here, pray that God would give us a boldness to preach his gospel, to share it with the lost, that, that would be a blessing to the local churches that we're help, helping to revitalize and, and plant. So we need prayer partners. But we also need people that want to invest in the kingdom work financially here in the city. Uh, we need help uh, with additional staff salaries. We need help with church planners' salaries. Uh, we need help with building expenses. Uh, I'm very thankful for the facility God has given us here on the west side of town. Uh, uh, our, to use the facility costs us $80,000 a year, so we're in need of help to meet those expenses. We're in this old church building. Uh, we're in need of help to make repairs, and um, God has brought different people along to help us with different projects on the building, and we're very thankful for that. Our Bread of Life ministry uh, has needs. We're in need of an additional van to pick up this food. Uh, we have several stores here in the city that we pick this food up in. Uh, we, we make uh, uh, four trips a day to one of these stores, to another store, two trips every day. And uh, so there's constantly picking up these donations. We're managing the distribution of these donations around the city, so we need an additional vehicle. So you can help us in that way. You can help by coming to the city. Maybe you'll spend a week with your family here in the city. Uh, maybe you'll send a group from your church. We've had just dozens and dozens of mission teams over the years. And we've had many families that will come. Well, a family will uh, give us a call and say, we've got a couple of days, can we come down and help? And they'll come down and, and uh, help with the repairs on the building, help with the distribution of food. So we welcome the Lord's people to partner with us here in the city. You know, one of the reasons we invite people to come to the city and see for themselves what the Lord is doing, it almost takes that and then you're impacted by it. We've had um, individuals that have called up and said, Bill, I want to come and help and I'll give you 
a few weeks uh, or I'll give you a month, I've got some downtime. They end up coming for a month and then staying for six months. We've seen the Lord do that. And then we've had uh, interns come and spend a summer with us and now two of those interns are pastoring one of the churches that we've helped reopen. And so the city impacts people. And so come and, come and experience that yourself. And your heart will be blessed by you see God loving people. These mission teams will discover um, the theology of sharing the gospel. And I'll be honest with you, when the Lord brought a greater understanding to me about the theology of the message of righteousness and how to preach that theme in the Bible, it literally set my heart free to evangelize. And that's what happened when, happens when the Lord's people learn the theology of the, the, the gospel and the message of the imputation of the righteousness of Christ. Well, as people are able to come here and really have a pressing need met as far as food is concerned, they're also able to interact with us uh, in, in kind of a more spiritual way. We're able to not only share Christian love with the community, share Christ with the community through uh, deeds and through the act of a food pantry, but we're also able to share the gospel with them. We see quite a few people uh, exposed to a message that they would never otherwise be exposed to, or a lot of people considering the gospel message in a way that they would never consider before because they're involved with our pantry. And people that come time after time uh, just really become softened to it. And I can think of uh, quite a few people who have had that similar testimony that they're kind of uh, resistant at first and after coming for a few weeks and months ha have shared now I'm coming almost just to hear the sermon the food is great but I've really warmed up to this message and gotten to know the people and uh, I, I really am grateful to be able to see a community of people serving in, in a way that really demonstrates Christ to them uh, to see the history of this building um, almost uh, almost go up for sale when the church pulled out of the denomination, almost uh, taken by eminent domain when the city came to build and build this housing district, almost taken by fire when it was set on fire back in the 70s, almost taken when developers were constantly offering uh, millions of dollars for the property to just see that it has always been preserved for the sake of the gospel and it's always been preserved for gospel ministry uh, and to see the way it's, it's even still happening uh, Lord willing into the future. Um, that's been one, one big thing that I've seen in my time here and it's been the thing that's really uh, shown me for sure that God has his hand on this place. It's been great for me when I first came here. Uh, I was really like a ministerial intern and was able to get a lot of opportunities preaching uh, in the pantry services which was really uh, really a big deal for me in a formative time in my uh, life and pursuit of ministry to be able to have a lot of experience uh, handling the Word of God and sharing the Word of God and, and evangelizing. Um, so that was very formative in my life and I've seen that uh, in a lot of other people people's lives as well. People that have come to serve with us for a summer or a year. Um, guys that are desiring to enter the ministry who've been able to um, get a lot of practical preaching experience and that's something that I've really been um, encouraged by and blessed by my opportunities to preach through the Gospel of John or preach a sermon series on on Genesis um, both things I've had an opportunity to do while I'm here that have been impactful to me uh, really developing my my ministry um, and the Lord has really used that to kind of continue to give me a burden for where he would have me. In addition to um, serving the community in the form of a food pantry, we're also able to partner with a lot of churches from all across the country. And uh, it's really interesting to see the body of Christ come together when you look at one local church. Uh, you can see how there, there's a hand and a foot. You'll see all the, the particular members of a body in one particular church. I also see that on a bigger picture as I see churches that are different, gifted differently. As I see churches that are gifted differently coming together uh, and serving with us, we can really see the, the body of Christ in a larger way coming and working in, in this place. We're able to partner with teams that come in help us with various projects on the building, a lot of cleaning, painting projects, a lot of things associated with the pantry. They're able to come alongside us and work in the pantry for the time that they're here. 
um, sorting through food, staying up past midnight to unload the van, uh, and really just laboring in the food pantry uh, and able to serve with us as, uh, in that capacity. Uh, prior to working in this ministry, I'd always been very cautious of uh, what you might call a social gospel, uh, having an emphasis on just good works and, and just believing that the, the end goal of the Christian is to just do good. And, and uh, I think the church has really been cautious of, of that, uh, replacing the gospel message with good works. But I've never really been challenged to see a church actively pursue the good of their neighbor in, in a way quite like this. And I've really seen that um, there's really nothing wrong with actively pursuing uh, social work and to, to be involved in works where our neighbors are benefiting. Um, I think it re a lot of it really is the call of the Christian. Um, righteousness is something that comes by faith, but righteousness is something that is seen in the lives of believers. The, the uh, righteousness that comes by faith actually comes when people are, are doing good deeds and, and living as Christ would live and able to demonstrate the hands and feet of Jesus to the world. And I've seen that in this place in ways that I've never seen before. I've really had my heart challenged and, and broken over um, suffering in the world and people who are down and out and really seen uh, that it is the duty of, of believing people to share those burdens, to care for those burdens, and to minister to physical needs as a vehicle to communicate the gospel as well. And that's that's one thing that I've seen uniquely here. I'm Andrew Gowans, and I am a pastoral assistant here at Manor Community Church. First time I came to New York City was in 2011. I was part of a missions team that came with my local church. I was very excited about New York. Had been before, heard all the great stuff, so I came and was with the ministry and it just completely opened my eyes to the love of Christ and what the church ought to be doing to show that love. And so through the giving out of food, through the interaction with the church there, through just simple evangelism in the city, I, I gained a burden for what was, what was going on, what God's work was here in New York City. I think probably the greatest area in which um, New York Gospel Ministries and specifically Manor Community Church has affected me has shown me the broadness of the body of Christ. It is so beautiful to see here in New York City where you have every single nationality, ethnicity coming together to praise and worship the Lord. A Sunday morning you can have five different types of people, different backgrounds, different uh, ways of life, and yet they're all worshiping God, and they're all coming together and praising the Lord. That is, that's probably the greatest way in which this ministry has affected me. It's shown me the greatness and, and the broadness of the body of Christ. I see, I see probably the greatest way in which we're affecting the community is through our, our generous deeds, our good deeds, and the community has been affected in a great way. We're feeding close to 500 people a week, and they're each receiving 100 to 125 dollars of food. That work is affecting the community and showing them that the church is not just here to stay within its walls. It's we're we're here to reach out to the poor, those in needy, meet their temporal needs, and then meet their eternal need by telling them about Jesus Christ. Well, I have the blessing of being be, to be able to be involved with both aspects of our ministry. I'm involved in the food pantry ministry, so I get to manage the floor, manage the distribution. I work with the pickups, driving across town to these stores, picking up food, but I also get the great blessing of then being able to be on the other side and being in the preaching role, being in the leading of the singing on Sunday mornings, uh, being able to personally interact with the people who are coming in. So I do a lot of work with our food pantry ministry, doing all the administrative tasks there, but I also get to work in the, the pastoral role in a sense as well. One of the most amazing things to me is, is seeing the lives touched as, as these people leave. So they come to the service, they bring their cart, their cart's filled up with food, and then we'll have one person in the front calling the names out to these people, come get your cart. And as they leave, we'll have one person there shaking hands with them and just saying thank you for coming. And to see the smiles on those faces, it's, it's moving. It is very moving. And to know that we are helping them in that temporal sense and giving them food for the next two, three, four, five days, but we're also giving them something much more important, something that's not going to go five days, 
but that could last an eternity. I think that's probably the most amazing thing to me is, is just the, the receiving attitude, the gracious attitude, and the, and the hope that we've given to them beyond just their week. It's been a, a process to get to get all this working. And really, I, I attribute a lot of the smoothness to our, our two lead volunteers, Jenny and Norma. They, they're they former school teachers. Uh, they, they get these people in order. They get them in line. They tell them when to come in, when to go out. They're really running the show. Sometimes I'm just in the third or fourth seat just watching these people work. <laughs> but Jenny and Norma are, are fantastic. And the, the commitment they have to this ministry is is staggering. I love the, the hard work and the time and they, they, they put into it. And they they really really keep this ministry running smoothly our hope with with everything we're doing here in the distribution of food and the, and the kind deeds to the widows and the needy and the, the homeless is that yes that we meet their need in the temporal situation but ultimately that we see them come to be a disciple of Jesus Christ we we love we love to see people get it, get it, get Jesus, understand the gospel, understand that it's more than just a cart of food, that what we're doing here will affect your eternal soul. And so the greatest joy we gain is seeing someone come in off the streets, they're just coming to the services, not interested, and then slowly and surely they come to know Jesus Christ. My church was actively involved in the New York Gospel Ministry and funding it. Uh, so we were supporting church for a long time. I'd seen Bill Jones for it for a very long time, come to our church missions conferences and such. And he always piqued my interest with New York City. This last year, um, I was going into my senior year and I was on a scholarship where I was going to be able to intern, not have to make too much money. So I started looking at different internship opportunities and this was one that came up. I knew there was something that was going to be a little bit different than just your typical internship. Here interning means you're doing a lot. You're driving across town in New York City traffic. You're dealing with volunteers. You're learning how to manage people, how to make things run smoothly, and at the same time, not losing the big picture of why we're doing this, of preaching the gospel. And so interns here get the amazing opportunity to come in and do a lot of things in a great city. But ultimately, we remember that our highest point is preaching the gospel, and you get to be a unique part of that here.